Hello and welcome back to my RC channel, I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be installing an on-screen display to my high-end 450 size quadcopter build. At this point I'm going to stop numbering the episodes, don't worry I'm not abandoning the series, I just think that from this point the videos can help people if they are named correctly. This video will still be included in the high-end 450 quadcopter size playlist. In the last video you saw me pick my FPV gear in the form of the Isheen TS832 video transmitter and the 600 TV line FPV camera from Surveilzone. Zone. In this video I'm going to be installing an OSD in the middle of it. In the Pixhawk bundle I bought came this circuit board known as the Minim OSD. There are a lot of versions of this board, in fact I bought two from Banggood within the same month and got two different versions. There's now also a micro version as well, however I'm going to be installing the full version. This is the board and it comes with no instructions so let's break it down. We are going to use the Pixhawk's telemetry output known as Mavlink which connects direct to our OSD. We then have video input pins from our camera and video output pins to our video transmitter which overlays the telemetry data on the top of our video. Pretty straightforward. The board doesn't appear to have a USB adapter though. So how do we change the settings so that it shows custom information suitable to each individual's needs? You will need an FTDI adapter which connects to these pins at the end of the board. I have an FTDI clone from Banggood and it costs around 2 GBP. Some people advise that you should only use a genuine FTDI adapter but I didn't have any problems with this clone. You need to get an FTDI adapter with female pins. You also need one that can input 5 volts. This one I have has a jumper that can switch between 3 volts and 5 volts. Before we get into connecting it to the USB and computer, we need to talk about modifying it slightly. This is optional but strongly recommended. The board is composed of two sides known as the digital side and the analog side. Put simple, we've got two chips. One does the digital processing and the other is used for analog video. On this version of the board they require two different power sources. The digital side takes its 5 volts from our Pixhook and the analog side takes its power from the 12 volts that we send to our VTX. It takes the power from the voltage pin on our servo lead from the VTX. It then has a 5 volt downstep regulator to provide 5 volts to the analog side of the board. This can be a problem though, stepping 12 volts down to 5 volts is done by wasting most of the energy and this causes a lot of heat to the system. The analog chip is very sensitive and blows very easily using this setup, so much so that some of the older Minim OSD boards come with a solder jumper that allows you to pass the 5 volt from the digital side to power the analog side. Unfortunately this Banggood version does not have such a jumper and I don't want to risk my video cutting out in the air due to a faulty analog chip. So we have to modify the board slightly. We can take some 28 gauge wire and feed the positive voltage from the Mavlink pins to the analog side onto this component shown here. We can then do the same with the ground pin and connect it to the analog side as well. We can't leave it there though. If we connect our FPV camera and VTX through the video pins and include the voltage wire then we will have a short. We have two options, either remove the voltage line out of our FPV circuit and power the FPV system separately or disconnect the voltage line somehow of the circuit board so that it does not try to power up the analog side. The second option is the easiest, all we have to do is remove this diode from the circuit board and the voltage from our FPV system will no longer power the regulator on the Minim OSD. It sounds more complicated than it is, we are soldering up a couple of wires and removing one component on the board. I did all of this in about 5 minutes. Now that the hardware is sorted, we are ready to connect the FTDI adapter to the Minim OSD board. FTDI adapters are usually labelled black side and green side. This cheap knockoff isn't though, so the easiest way to remember is that the ground label should be the opposite to the green side. Now we have the FTDI adapter connected, you can see that we have two lights on the board. That means that both the digital and analog side are being powered up correctly. If you have never used an FTDI adapter before, you will need to download the drivers from ftdichip.com. We have two software options to get our OSD going, Arducam OSD and Minim OSD Extra. 
they are the same software though really. Minim OSD Extra is the latest version of the software and Arducam OSD is the first version of the software. Some of you might be thinking why would I refer to an earlier version but the answer is simple. Arducam OSD in my opinion is more user friendly. It doesn't have as many features but I got it working much quicker than I did the Minim OSD Extra. I found the Arducam OSD had a more accurate placement on the screen of the characters compared to the Minim OSD Extra. However, Arducam does not have the option to have specific quadcopter functions. It just has general options for aircraft. With Arducam OSD, you will have to set the stall speed really high if using a quadcopter, otherwise you will receive a warning that your aircraft is stalling when you are in a hover. Minim OSD Extra has quadcopter specific options, however I find the placement of the characters on the screen to be less accurate and a lot of trial and error is required until you have your perfect placement on the screen. For this example I'm going to be using Minim OSD Extra as it gives me the options that I want. There was definitely more frustration in the setup but I will show you how I got there. Despite the two software options the install is pretty much the same so you can download both and decide which is best for you. For Arducam, go to code.google.com forward slash p forward slash Arducam hyphen OSD and click download firmware and tools here. For Minim OSD Extra, go to the DIY drone thread, click Minim OSD Extra R800 and type in the required password to get your download. You might need WinRAR or WinZip to extract the files. I have saved mine in my RC folder on my desktop. Open up osdconfig.exe and then plug in your USB cable into the computer. At the bottom you have an option to change the COM port. In my case the COM port is COM7. We need to upload the latest firmware. Click options and update firmware. Then select the 2.4 hex file from the firmware and characters folder. We want the copter version for this video. Once that is done we also need to update the character set. Select options, update character set and choose the Minim OSD 2.4 MCM character set file. Be aware if you haven't done the modification on the Minim OSD board so that we are transferring the 5 volts from the digital side to the analog side, in order to update the character set you'll need to plug in your FPV gear to power up both chips. We can leave the RSSI box with its default values. Unfortunately, our X8R receiver does not output the correct RSSI information, so we will be using the RSSI data on our Tyrannis, and I will show you how to do that later. Warnings auto panel switch I have set to disabled. OSD toggle channel I have set to channel 8. That is going to allow us to move between the two different panels that we are allowed to have in this software and also the third option where we can turn off the OSD completely. I have got the cycle option unchecked because I'm going to be using a three position switch but if you're using a two position switch you're going to want to have that checked. So I'm using channel 8 here to flip between my screens. You can also use the mode switch, but I don't recommend that. We will need to set up a switch on the Tyrannis for this. A lot of people don't bother with this function, but I really like it. In the input screen on my Tyrannis, I have created an entry called OSD. I have linked it to a spare three position switch on my Tyrannis. Then in the mixer screen, I have linked it up to channel 8 as well. The problem is that the amber sounds do not contain an OSD sound, so I have made a custom one myself. I downloaded an app on my phone called Voice Recorder. I then recorded myself saying OSD1, OSD2 and OSD off. I connected the Tranis to the computer in the bootloader mode and then uploaded my recorded files to the sounds folder. I can then go into the special function screen as shown in the Tyrannus episode and link my new sounds to the switch that I have set up to toggle my OSD. OSD1, OSD2, OSD off. Max vertical speed we can leave at 5 and over speed I have set to 40. Call sign you can ignore as I won't be displaying that, that's up to you. OSD brightness I have set to medium. Units I have set to imperial. Minimum battery voltage I have set to 14.8 volts for a 4S. Battery warning level is set to 10%. Show remaining percentage is also checked. Show sign before value just gives you an icon before the value to help you recognize what that value is telling you. I have got this turned on for airspeed and home altitude. Once you have made your changes it is important to press save current tab to OSD otherwise those settings will be lost. 
onto panel one and we have these options down the side here which is going to allow us select which values we want to see on the screen i have got airspeed battery a battery percent current flight mode heading home altitude now that's the altitude from ground level and not sea level home direction home distance horizon indicator the time trip distance vertical speed visible satellites and warnings you can move stuff around to where you like but be warned the characters don't line up quite the same as they do on the picture i had to do a lot of trial and error getting the icons to sit where i want when you are done again make sure you press save current tab to osd then onto my panel 2 i've got pretty much everything including waypoint information and gps coordinates Make sure you save that panel as well. When you're done, unplug the FTDI adapter and we're ready to connect it to our FPV gear. Once you've got all your settings perfect, I recommend that you save your OSD settings to a file if you want to refer to it in the future or reload it for any reason. This particular board is nice as it tells you which is voltage, ground and video in and out. My FPV gear is using servo connectors already, so it's just plug and play. The last thing to do is to plug our telemetry adapter provided in the Banggood kit into our telemetry port on the Pixhawk. Before any of this works though, we need to ensure the Pixhawk has the right settings in Mission Planner. Connect the USB to your Pixhawk and navigate to the parameter tree. We are after the serial values. Make sure you copy them the same as I have got them here. Save the parameters and we are finally ready to connect the battery to the quadcopter. I've got my DVR switched on. Initially, we get an error that says no MAV data. This is annoying as it looks like it's not working at first. However, it's just waiting for the Pixhawk to boot up. With the ArduCam software, we get a more welcoming image that says waiting for a heartbeat. Once your Pixhawk has booted up, we can now see our OSD and it is working. We can flip through my switches to see the second panel and also the clear panel. Now we just need some good weather to fly. Here we go. I managed to find a very small window where the weather was decent enough for me to get a couple of flights in. So the first thing that I want to address is the error that I made in the setup stage of this video. I set the vertical speed warning to five feet per minute. And of course, the aircraft is going to ascend or descend more than five feet per minute. So that's why we're getting this warning up here. I have since changed it to about 100. That's that figure down here. You can see it's going minus and plus. So I changed that. The next issue that I ran into on the first flight was the voltage. Now, this isn't a problem with the OSD. It's a problem with the power module that I got that was bundled in with the Pixhawk. It's just not performing correctly at all. Now, when the aircraft is at a standstill and there's no load on the battery, then the voltage reads correct. But the minute there is any load on it, I don't know if it's the voltage divider or, or, or whatever. It just doesn't read correctly. It's the same with the current as well. So I went and read on some forums, and it seems that it's to do with the fact that it's a cloned version. It's not like a 3D robotics genuine component. So I bit the bullet, and I have gone and bought a genuine one. So I will see if that improves if it doesn't, uh, the thing that I think I'm going to do is buy the FR Sky telemetry module that, that plugs straight into your battery and then perhaps use the Tyrannis to get that telemetry information. So we're a bit further along in the flight and you can see I'm getting the battery low warning and this is how I know that there is a problem with the power module telemetry because I have got my LiPo voltage alarm connected directly to the battery on the quadcopter and it's also set at 14.8 volts and you can see here this is a timer and it's showing just under the three minute mark and already it's showing 14.5 it's jumping up and down it's just not working correctly now with this particular battery it's not a great battery to be honest i get about an eight to nine minute flight it's an old battery and it, it's become really warm but i was flying for much longer you see we're at the four minute mark now i've just skipped on a little bit further and uh, still flying no problem this is showing 14 point Anything between 14.6 volts and 14 volts, um, 
that's not right at all. We've got a different flight here. You can see, uh, again, this, the standing voltage, it's at uh, 16 plus volts. So, you know, it, it's fine. As soon as it's got load on it, just it just doesn't read correctly. Oh, another thing that I missed, uh, and I know people will ask, is there's a little button on the OSD. And all it does, if you press it, it just resets it. So that's what that does. Anyways, <laughs> those were the uh, initial things that I had a problem with. What I've actually done on this flight... I didn't change the vertical speed, the lowest warning. Uh, I should have done that. But what I did do is turn off the battery warning. So we won't get a battery warning now when this drops below. So let's talk about some of the icons that we've got on the screen. I think at this point somewhere I flick into the second screen using the switch. There we go. So this is like all the other information. Still get your warnings, by the way, uh, on the... Uh, OSD where, it, you know, the screen where it shows nothing. Let's just talk through some of the uh, icons on the screen here. So we've got the flight mode down here, which is currently in loiter. We've got the battery percentage, which probably not reading correctly. And then you've got the battery voltage and the current in amps. You've got the vertical speed there. You've got the number of satellites. That's really handy. have got a timer here. And the timer sets off as soon as the quadcopter lifts up. So it's, it's quite nice that it can detect that. We've got the home altitude, which is the altitude from the ground and not sea level. So we're at 58 feet here. This one is the entire trip distance. So we've not gone very far, just a thousand feet or so. This is the distance in feet to how far away from where you took off. And then here we've got airspeed as well and we've got a compass up the top here which shows us the direction and this is really cool this isn't an arrow that shows us which way is to home that's really cool and of course we've got the artificial horizon as well I'm not sure what this line is down here I think it's just a bug but it doesn't bother me too much so not going to worry about that. Anyways, let's come in for a landing. And that is my video on how to install and get the OSD running. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. Thanks so much for watching. Please continue to subscribe. Cheers.